Adhesive capsulitis, more commonly known as frozen shoulder, is a chronic condition characterized by pain and reduced range of motion at the shoulder. More specifically, this affects the glenohumeral joint. That is, the joint between the humerus and the glenoid process of the scapula. This, along with the acromioclavicular and sternoclavicular joints, make up the shoulder, which is stabilized by the labrum, a ring of fibrocartilage that better anchors the head of the humerus to the glenoid fossa, as well as multiple ligaments like the glenohumeral, coracohumeral, coracoacromial, and coracoclavicular ligaments, and four rotator cuff muscles, the supra and infraspinatus, teres minor, and subscapularis. A capsule surrounds this, known as the joint capsule, which also aids in stabilizing the shoulder, and adhesive capsulitis seems to affect the anterior, superior, and inferior portions of the capsule. The typical features are a gradual onset of shoulder pain and reduction in active and passive range of motion, particularly in a so-called capsular pattern, limited passive external rotation, abduction, internal rotation, and flexion in that order, though debate exists regarding this so-called capsular pattern. It is usually on one side, though in up to one in three people, it will develop in the other side at some stage. The pain is often felt in the lateral part of the shoulder, has a dull character with gradual onset, and may radiate to the biceps. Classically, adhesive capsulitis was described in three stages. Stage 1, or freezing, where there is a gradual onset and progression of pain, usually in the lateral shoulder, which can be troublesome at night. Initially, there may not be much limitation in range of motion, but this does also worsen. Freezing will typically last 2 to 9 months. In stage 2, or the frozen stage, the pain begins to ease and may be more limited to the extremities of motion, however the range of motion is extremely limited. This stage lasts around 12 months. Stage 3, or the thawing stage, features a slow improvement in the range of motion and any remaining pain. This stage can last several years. After the thawing stage, the range of motion will gradually return to normal, though more recently, this has been challenged as some people do experience persisting functional limitations. It's important to assess the impact on day-to-day -day functioning, as it can result in limitations in activities of daily living, such as getting dressed, or limiting the person's ability to work or sleep. It most commonly affects people between the ages of 40 and 60 years of age, and is more common in females than males by around 2 to 1. The lifetime incidence is around 2 to 5%. In cases where there is no identifiable cause, it is termed primary adhesive capsulitis. While if there is a contributing factor, like trauma or previous shoulder surgery, diabetes, and thyroid disorders, it is termed secondary adhesive capsulitis. As we said, the mechanism behind it is poorly understood, though it is thought to result from synovial inflammation leading to chronic fibrosis, with evidence to show fibroblast proliferation, smooth muscle transformation, and collagen deposition. Diagnosis is clinical, meaning no specific test or imaging is required to diagnose it, though it is usually a diagnosis of exclusion. After ruling out other differentials, such as chronic dislocations, pathological fractures, or rotator cuff tears. The physical exam typically features limited range of movement of the glenohumeral joint, tested by assessing flexion and abduction, as well as abducted external and internal rotation of the arm while the patient lies supine. The coracoid pain test is sensitive and specific for adhesive capsulitis, where pain is elicited by direct pressure on the coracoid. Features like focal points of tenderness or neurological disturbance like numbness or weakness suggest an alternative diagnosis. Imaging like x-ray is the initial modality to rule out other pathology, like chronic dislocations, pathological fractures, and calcific rotator cuff tendinopathy.
Overall, it is a self-limiting condition, typically taking around 24 months to resolve. Non-surgical management includes analgesia, such as non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, though their efficacy specifically in adhesive capsulitis is not clear. Physiotherapy has been linked with improvements in function, as have intra-articular corticosteroid injections, and using both together seems to yield better results. Hydrodilatation, which involves injecting the joint with local anaesthetic to dilate it, has shown some benefit, and transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation, TENS, has also been described as reducing pain and improving range of motion in some cases. Surgical approaches are generally considered in those who have not improved after a minimum of three to six months of non-surgical treatment and cannot tolerate symptoms. Manipulation is one option, where the humerus is manipulated to break adhesions, with arthroscopic capsule release being another option.